Hello and welcome to T3, one of the many ways Make It Work can help you achieve a stress-free digital lifestyle. I'm Jeremy Atticone, and here's what's trending. It must be that time of month as Microsoft has just released its security update for April on Tuesday. There's 11 security bulletins that we need to tell you about that patch 25 vulnerabilities. Of those, five are rated critical, meaning that you should download and install them as soon as this video is over. These vulnerabilities could allow a hacker to gain control of your Windows computer without your knowledge or permission. So once this video is over, click Start, Programs, and then select Microsoft or Windows Updates to download and install these. Apple has also released an update package for the brand new MacBook Pros that we told you about yesterday. They resolve some graphic stability issues that affect high performance gaming and video, and also include some bug fixes. So if you ordered one of these brand new Macs, make sure you run the Apple update immediately. To do so, click on the Apple menu and select Software Update. One of the tools that I use on a regular basis is GoToMeeting. It's a fantastic tool, and if you haven't used it, you should check it out. While playing with my iPad yesterday, I discovered that they've just released a free GoToMeeting app for the iPad. It's available in the App Store. If you're not familiar with GoToMeeting, it allows you to connect to a meeting host's computer to see exactly what's on the screen. They can present spreadsheets, presentations, whatever's on their computer, and now you can view it on the iPad. You can also connect to the audio on the iPad or using the phone, so you're able to see who's talking and attend the meeting very easily. There are some iPad-specific features, including multi-touch zoom, so you can zoom in on the screen, and it does support portrait and landscape mode. Now you can be anywhere with an internet connection and attend that meeting. There is an important caveat, though. This is attendee-only mode. It does not allow you to present a meeting. So check it out in the App Store. Go to meetings. We're receiving a lot of questions from iPad and iPhone users about the new chargers. The iPad charger looks identical to the original iPhone charger, but not so much because the iPad is actually a 10 watt charger instead of a 5 watt charger. So we've received a lot of questions about how you can mix and match them. One of the questions is, can you use an iPhone charger to charge an iPad? Yes, you can, while it does charge a little bit slower. It's very similar to when you plug it into a computer. It will actually charge both devices, but it does it slower than the dedicated wall charger. Now, another question we received is, can you charge an iPhone with an iPad charger? Yes? No? Maybe. We're, we're not really sure. We've seen some conflicting information on Apple's website, and we contacted both Apple Care and the Apple Store, and we couldn't get a definitive answer. We did hear that while it can be done and it won't cause any harm, we don't recommend it. We recommend using the charger that came with each device. A lot of people also use third-party chargers, but that tends to be a mixed bag, both with iPhones and iPads. People are reporting mixed results with these devices. And if you get the message charging is not supported with this accessory, I wouldn't try it again. Thanks for tuning in for T3. For tech trends and more, visit makeitwork.com. I'm Jeremy Anticoni, and that's what's trending.